بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Okay so let's try to verify the interland routing option with uh, the physical router with a separate gateways and again here I'll be using a GNS3 tool of course you can use evng uh, the same thing the only interface will change so my requirement is I want to make sure that the users of the VLAN 10 here should be able to communicate with the users of the VLAN 20 on the other side. That's what I want. So I'll be using here. Of course, as I'll try to continue with the same lab here because again, uh, adding the new PCs, adding the new lab that will be time consuming. So I'm going to use the same lab. So in this lab, um, I, I will assume this as an L2 switch. Actually, it's an L3 switch, but we will use a one router here. And that order will be doing the inter VLAN routing from here with a separate gate base. That's what I'm trying to do here. Okay, so let's see. Uh, let's see if I have a router here. So already I have the iways router. You can use the iways router, a drag and drop the iways router, and I can just give the name as router one. And I think this is an iways router, right? It's running on the iways. I can start that router. And let me see if I if it is having a multiple ports because I require two Ethernet ports for gateway. That's the kind of a challenge I have here. So I need to change the number of ports here. So I need to have one more interface card. And let me see if I if it supports two ports. Now you can see there are two ports. I need at least two ports to run for two different VLANs, right? So I'm going to connect this users so as per my topology again we are connecting port number one and two in the vlan 10 and port number three and four in the vlan 20. Uh, in our case it's going to be e1 by uh, in our case it will be e0 by one e0 by two and e1 by one and e1 by two so already this part is already done here and if you want you can just see the ports here as well so i need to connect a router so that's what we try to do and the router will be connecting on any one of the ports and then we'll assign the IP address to the gateways here. So let's do that. I directly jump in and try to connect F0 by 0 connecting on any one of the port. Uh, port I'll be using E0 by 3. I think E0 by 3 I can use or let me go with some other ports like E2 by 0 and uh, I'll be using this now again the challenge here as I said uh, the the main challenge here the connectivity part as this router is running on the local machine here and this is running on the GNSC VM that's a kind of a challenge so which means I, I have to run a router which is also running on the GNSC VM which means this router has to be either the IOU or the IOSV with an L3 kind of thing right so which means I cannot use this router. So I'm going to simply uh, stop this one and I have to add the IOU. I'll be using the IOU here. So we can go and add the preferences, add the new device again, the same thing. We have to go back and add an L3 image. So L3 image, if we already have this image, we can just simply browse and select the image. Okay, so I'm going to add this image. So I'll say router one so any some name uh, router kind of thing and once i select i can just click on finish and click on apply and there is one more thing i need to add the ivory source code i don't know this new gns3 it's automatically remove these options and this is a router and let's see if this works fine or not so i've already started and then quickly console now that's a difference a kind of connectivity as you can see this is my uh router the iou device i'll change this as the router one i think router one i cannot use because already i have a router one so i'll say router one one some name uh, if required we can change it a little bit later so I'll, I'll remove this device we'll change the name as router one here and hopefully if everything is okay once you are able to do this so this is my router one and and then we'll do the connectivity part the connectivity part again you can see we do have this ethernet ports now these are again the the layer three ports as uh, it is a layer three image so i'm going to use uh, specific ports here 
let's say e0 by 0 i'll be using and this e0 by 0 goes and connects to uh, e1 by 0 just remember the ports and then e0 by 1 goes and connects to just remember the ports okay so i'll use e2 by 0 okay now let let me just quickly draw the topology so that it, it won't be any much confusion here so what i'm trying to do here is we will use the same uh, topology here so in my case now this is going to be my topology but the only difference is i'm going to change the port so the port wise uh, these ports are okay this is like e1 by 0 So this is like e1 by 0 and then it's e0 by 1, right? e0 by 1 and then e0 by 2. So this part we don't need to disturb. And this one is also e1 by 0, e1 by 1 and e1 by 2. And the only thing uh, we need to uh, adjust is the ports what we are connecting on this side. Now this side ports we need to know. So if you go back anytime, if you have any confusion, so you can always go back and see the devices here. That's how I do because as you progress with more and more connections, it's very difficult to trace or sometimes you forget to note down or sometimes even if you note down, you need to confirm the port. So you can see here, this port goes and connects. You can see the router side, I'm using the ports E0 by 0 and E0 by 1. So this is my E0 by 0 and this is my E0 by 1. And on the switch side, it is E1 by 0 and E2 by 0. This is E1 by 0 and this is E2 by 0, okay? So keep the keep a track of the ports what you are connecting. That's uh, something you need to remember. And you can select here. You can see when you select, it shows up. So what I need to do here, as per the configuration, again uh, we have to assign the IP address on the router interfaces. So we'll go to the router interface. Now this is my router only. So we'll go and assign the IP address, the gateway address. We can assign the IP address as 182.168.1.100 with slash 25 and the no shutdown command to make the interface up. And the other interface is E0 by 1 and the E0 by 1 gateway address, we decided to use 182.168.2.100 and the no shutdown command. And if you verify with show IP interface brief, when you say show IP interface brief, we can see the interfaces on this. So, which means from the router, I should be able to communicate with the PCs, which is 1.1. But again, if you see, I'm not able to communicate with 1.1. And I'll stop this pings and I'll try to communicate with 1.2. Let me see if that works. Again, you can see it's not working here as well. And even if you try to communicate with 2.1 and 2.2, also the communication will not happen. And the reason is simple because this port goes and connects to this particular port. Now, this is in the VLAN 1. And these two ports, if you remember, we have already configured them in the VLAN 10. So in order to be able to route the packet, in order to be able to communicate from here, this port and this port should be in the same VLAN, right? So the basic rule. If you're trying to communicate with the same uh, network devices, they must be on the same VLAN and they must be on the same subnet, right? So that's the problem. So which means we also need to assign this particular port, which means all these three ports should be in the VLAN 10 and all these three ports should be in the VLAN 20. So which means I need to go back to my switch, switch one in my case. And if you say show VLAN, you can see here these two ports are in the VLAN 10, but the port E1 by 0, E1 by 0, E1 by 0 is in the VLAN 1, and E2 by 0 is also in the VLAN 1. So we need to shift uh, interface E1 by 0, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10, and then the other port, which is the gateway connecting to gateway E2 by 0. Uh, that port we need to shift to the VLAN 20. Okay, so I'm going to quickly configure this. And now if you say show VLAN, and when you say show VLAN, you can see this particular three ports, the two ports which are connecting to the computers and the third port will be connecting to the gateway should be in the same VLAN. Now, once we do this, now if I try to verify now, 
because these are very small, small verifications. It looks very simple, but uh, really good to understand, especially when you do troubleshooting. You can see I'm able to communicate 1.2. And likewise, I'll try to ping to the next uh, VLAN, which is a two-dot network. I should be able to communicate with the internal host. So this basically confirms that your gateway and your end users are on the same VLAN. And, and that's it. We don't need to do much. So I go to the PC1. And I'll try to communicate with 192.168.2.1. I must be getting a reply. You can see I'm getting a reply from 2.1. And also I should be able to communicate with 2.2. And if you set trace to 2.1 to verify the packet trace, it first goes to the gateway before it comes to the 2.1. So the trace shows you that it goes through the gateway. Okay. So that's how it is. Even if you try to communicate with 192.168.2.3, uh, which is on a different uh, switch also, we should be able to communicate. Because if you try to see in this lab, uh, in this lab to verify from this PC1, I can communicate with these different VLAN PCs. Because whenever I'm trying to send the packet from the source address, let's say 192.168.1.1, and the destination is 192.168.2.3 or 2.4. So 2.3 is here. So simply whenever a computer sees, the PC sees it's on a different subnet, it is going to simply forward the packet to the gateway. So it received on the gateway two dot network that is on the VLAN 10. And immediately the router says, if you want to go to two dot subnet, you have to go out of my another interface that is E2 by zero, the another interface, which is on the same uh, router. So if it is on the same router, you don't need to do routing. And from there, it enters the VLAN 20. And from the VLAN 20, if the packet is destined to any of these devices, it will go here. If the packet is destined to other side, it will go to here because there is a trunking already configured. If you remember, we already did the trunking in our trunking labs. Okay, so that's how the difference is, you know, when you are trying to merge uh, multiple labs, that's how it's going to be in the production network as well. And when you add, when this when it goes to the switch two and the switch two is going to again see that two dot three is on again it will do ARP those kind of stuff and send it back on this VLAN because the packet is coming from VLAN twenty so there is a tagging and it will ensure that it goes only to the VLAN twenty so if the packet is destined to two dot three it will send it to the two dot three if it is destined to two dot four it will send to two dot four or even if it is destined to this one it will send to this one. So you can see we do have an end-to-end -to -end, uh, end -to -end inter VLAN communication process is going on. But again, you can ask like, uh, what if I allow everything? But of course, we restrict everything using ACLs. That's something we are not going to see here. But normally, you will add some ACL uh, access control list a little bit later on to restrict what traffic will be allowed from one VLAN to another VLAN. Because as it goes, you can configure the ACLs to restrict that. So at this point of time, we will ensure that there is an inter VLAN routing process is accomplished uh, with the help of uh, separate physical gateways. So we'll be using two physical gateways. Again, this is something not a recommended option because if you have 10 VLANs, you need to have 10 gateways. That's a kind of limitation. And that's the reason we jump into the other solutions where we'll try to uh, go with the other options as well.